Hello everyone, John here again, and I'm working on the 3D printer. Uh, if you've been following along, it's been dropping temperatures really quickly whenever this wire gets wiggled. And I know it's the heater block because the temperature is reading accurately. So I went ahead and just ordered an entire replacement off of Amazon, link in the description. And I think it's important if you're going to be serious about 3D printing to have spares of things because you don't really want to spend time, downtime on your printer trying to fix every little problem. So it's important to have a replacement ready to go and then you just fix the other one in between prints and then you always have one spare ready to go. So we'll do a quick video here. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is plug this in directly to the power box and verify that it actually does work the way it's advertised and then we'll get on with the rest of it. Alright, so I have it slaved in and you can see that it does detect the temperature. Right there is the nozzle and the extruder fan is blowing. That's the part that blows over the red to prevent heat creep from your machine getting too hot up to filament. Uh, it's at 24, so it's the same temperature as the uh, ambient temperature. So let's go ahead and turn on the temp, control, temp, nozzle. Go ahead and just turn that up to any number, it doesn't matter. Because we're just verifying it goes up. And then we're gonna set the fan speed just to watch this fan speed change. And there it goes, it is spinning. Oh, look at the nice air. Nice air flow. This is supposed to be a drop-in replacement for the existing OEM. And we should see a different temperature on there. Oh, look at that, it's already up to temp. It looks great, it operates. Sorry for the shaky cam. So now I'm gonna go ahead and install this into the, um, I'm gonna remove the old one and then install the uh, new one. Something interesting is that it does have a blue tube and usually that means Capricorn PTFE and some problems I've noticed with people that use this is that they don't change the fittings because the inside diameter of the fittings is larger than the outside dim dimension of this and then it pops out a lot so I might just keep the white one because it does affect retract settings and all that so we're on the right path this one does work and I will swap it out so the old one is off uh, I have it off to the side and I'll repair that on my free time this is the mounting bracket and I'm actually going to swap this nozzle out for a 0.5 because that's the profile I'm using right now and then I will install it right up there. The new extruder is installed. I swapped out the blue cable or the blue PTFE tube for a white one of similar length to my old one but this one was just way too long. If you have retraction issues and you get like stringing it's probably because your tube's too long. You only need this to reach comfortably to the outside corner like that. That's as far as it needs to go, so don't have anything too much longer than that. Uh, I'm running to an issue here. I, I see all these wires poking out, and I kind of want this to be tidy and not have the same problems as the old set did. So I'm going to have to wrap these up with some masking tape or some duct tape or something, electrical tape, so it's nice and tidy. The whole point is to have things nice and tight so that it doesn't wear out as fast. But the new one does look good. I had to put the old nozzle on the new extruder because it's only 0.5 I, can, I have in sight right now. I'm sure I have a box from somewhere, but easy enough to fix. And so let's uh, tidy that up and then we will mount it up and see how it goes. So the new one's in after some finagling. Uh, some bitches about I have about this is that the wiring harness was just so long that the uh, there was just extra wires hanging out below where they had already gaffer taped it into the sleeving which doesn't make any fucking sense to me because I want to be able to keep this nice and clean. So I had to actually have to tuck it back there. So when I'm looking at it dead on, it's not that bad. Some good things is, is that the nozzle feels really clean compared to the last one. I mounted all this up again. Uh, there's some fitment issues right down here. I need to get a smaller screw for that. Other than that, it looks like it's good. So something I'm going to do to test it is print the very last thing that just failed. Since it has the right nozzle on it, it's supposed to be drop in. I'm going to try the same exact print. And see, that's where I got my name for my Instagram, was print from SD. Click on that. Mark 42. I believe it is the right aileron I need to print. I keep all my things I haven't printed here and all the ones I do print in there. So it's been set and we will see either way how this ends. 
Ah, just kidding. I actually have to level the bed again. Forgot to do that. New nozzle, new everything, so just might as well give it another shot. This was leveled, I don't know, five prints ago, so it should be pretty quick. I'll do the quick leveling method, and then we'll be on the road. And there it is. It is printing. I leveled the bed, and it is printing the same file that it was previously failing on all the time because the temperature was dropping. So in the next segment, the next clip you're going to see is this thing either completed or a mess because I'm about to hit the rack and we'll see what happens. So uh, stay tuned to the end and see how this thing turns out. Let me know if you guys have any tips on how to maintain your printers any better than I do. This is about four years old, but uh, it's a really good machine and I hope to get a few more years out of it. Well, 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 good morning, 3D printer people. It looks like it was a success. Eight hours. The new nozzle works. No temperature drops. I'm very impressed. So, have a couple extra spares of things around, just in case. It's nice. So, this is how you swap a 3D printer nozzle. See you in the next video.